following this farmer down a big old long driveway. It's almost like a road. 300 acres I just got granted permission to use. Mixed forest. I've known this guy for about a year. We just made a deal and I'm allowed to do whatever I want on this property. I can build a shelter, I can cut down trees, whatever I want to do, uh, which is pretty awesome. So we're about 45 minutes away from my house. This is going to be a nice spot to have a really awesome base camp, really awesome permanent shelter that I can do whatever I want with. We're following him right now so he can plow out a spot for me to park. As you can see, there's a ton of snow. I can't get uh, around to park anywhere. If I park on this, uh, on this drive, I'm blocking him. So he's going to plow me a load a little spot and we'll start hiking from there. Get it. So that was pretty awesome. The old farmer made a quick work of that. Now I got a nice parking spot. He said to keep it up for me so I can just park here. And that's pretty cool. Um, the agenda for today, it's already like 1.30. We're gonna hike in. I'm a bit close to the road, I've noticed, the highway. I can hear a little bit of trucks. So we're gonna go back into the bush, back up the, the drive, sorry, that way and into the bush. We're gonna look for a suitable spot to maybe potentially make a shelter definitely making a shelter here but i don't know if i'll find the spot today we'll just kind of explore cook us cook up some good food oh i need these gloves it's cold it's a cold day today it's like uh, negative five celsius it's not that bad but uh yeah i'm not used to it yet i was down in windsor living the florida of <laughs> the florida life the uh florida of canada life <laughs> I got my uh, Hidden Woodsman Dayrock 2.0, I believe it's called. It's Hidden Woodsman backpack, regardless. Look at that. Pulling a Joe already. My Kooksa. My Kooksa is attached to my gloves, guys. What is this nonsense? We're gonna get all this sorted out. I promise. That's gonna go there. That's not silly at all. Oh yeah, I can hear hear the trucks on the highway. I brought a shovel. Along with my folding saws, uh, my little folding telescopic winter shovel got lost in the move. And I haven't got is she back. I haven't got a new one yet. So I got my uh, yeah, aquamarine blue shovel. I like this one. It's a mix of both types of shovels, scoop and push. All right, you want to talk about shovels more? Let's go. Let's go. Got my big old snowshoes on too. That whole head of the shovel can get buried. And then some, I'm sure. What? Snowshoes are doing what snowshoes should do. And hair tracks. This is nice back in here, man. Looking wild. A lot more like bush. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Didn't I start a hut already in my front yard? I did. And I don't, I'm not, not certain what I'm gonna do about that. To be honest with you, that was something I thought Scout and I would do together. And I still can, he's running around doing fine. I just, I don't know, kinda lost the, uh, the draw for it once the whole thing happened with him. But anyways, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. Regardless, that's not the woods, that's my front yard. This is 300 acres of woods and trains, <laughs> but lots more bush, lots more trees. I can actually do things bushcrafty here. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I will still do something in my front yard. It's just, I don't feel like doing it right now. 
it's just not I don't have a good vibe on it right now so I'm gonna stay here I want to I want to do something here I'm gonna post up here and, and build I can cut anything I want down bow bow um, wise shelter wise I'm not gonna go overboard you know what I mean I'm not gonna cut anything bigger than probably my leg round but that's on the big side but uh, yeah we'll be respectful for sure try to use stuff like this whenever possible big old dead pine all oh, that wind is whipping through here Woo! anyway this is a really cool spot with some big rocks jutting out if it wasn't so open I'd kind of be inclined to stick around here but it is pretty open and uh, wind is coming through like I said these are all big boulders it's hard to tell right now with all the snow but that's a good foot foot deep up to here to the boulder in there make a chair look at me I have a chair for the backrest The things with rocks, you can get stuck in them. That's the things with rocks. Mm hmm. Look what I meant though. Look at the size. Look at the size of the snow. That's what I meant though. The depth of the snow in there. And then you're down to a layer of ice, even. Big and big and well it's looking kind of cool down in here the lighting is nice at least and there's some smaller uh, spruces that could be very valuable very useful in building the thing about having this much snow is that I don't know what's on the ground right um, it could be completely un unlevel lopsided and uh, and I would have no idea until I dug down or whatever so maybe we will, uh, we're not going to commit to too much today. Maybe we'll make a bed, maybe make a seat, get up uh, off the ground, have a little fire cook up, cook up some food, I'm starving. I got extra thick bacon, bonus. Oh, I got a Stormy Cromer hat. Uh, do you guys remember in my... Um, four item overnight winter camp I did like a month or whatever ago um, uh, I was wearing a fake Stormy Cromer I talked about it it's the power of the internet man I know it's nothing big like it's a, it's a hat it's really cool actually but um, it's on a smaller scale being a hat but how cool is that I never reached out to Stormy Cromer somebody showed them my video or they watched it they sent me two hats these are legit ones I like it I know I don't care if you don't it doesn't look, look uh, uh, stereotypical Joe but I like this I like this a lot excuse me the other one they gave me is even cooler it's uh it's like a tan OD color but it's way too big for my little noggin but yeah man full wool shout out stormy chromer thanks guys very very cool of you <laughs> well, I've been hiking around for a bit came to this spot I'm near a thick grove of young spruce. I'm near two openings, one on the side, one behind me. Got a good light coming in for filming. And then obviously it's not, it's winter time. Light as long as I can get it is a good thing. I got birch here, I've got some dead balsam fur around that I can see some dead cedar. So I'm obviously still Yeah, I'm still close enough to the highway where I can hear trucks. But I've hiked enough this way, or I'm starting to think that that just might be the case here. Um, so hopefully it's not too distracting and we'll see after this video. But yeah, I'm going to post up here for the day. 
Get a little bench going and a fire. And get this backpack off of me too. Oh, it's pretty loud, isn't it? Dang, that sucks. That is really unfortunate. There is a, another chunk of woods, but it's a hardwood hardwood area and it's back way behind the barn behind the farm and that will be uh, far enough where there will be no truck noise but there's nothing blocking the wind right now it's in the middle of the field it's just like a patch of uh, hardwood pretty big but the wind today is whipping through and obviously in the hardwoods you don't have stuff like spruce needles blocking the wind they're just toothpicks right now in the, in the winter time I got a big pile of snow there, and I've cleared out that area, which is pretty flat actually. It's starting to go up on a slant a little bit that way. What I'm planning on doing is having my fire on this side, and I'll use this big snow wall as kind of like a fire reflector slash windbreak. Not necessary, but it's there. Um, and I think I'll make my bench, just probably a crude bench, makeshift bench, from this tree to this skinny tree here. Yeah, that's a that's a flimsy tree. But anyways, it'll work for today. I think the, the whole overall idea and plan for the day has changed. I really don't want to have a permanent shelter right here where I want to hear trucks going by all the time. It's okay, but I live up north. It's not necessary. You know what I mean? I can get away from it. So that's what we'll do. Uh, more for just noise sake than anything really. But today, it's a good day to come out, kind of explore the area. Just relax a little bit, set up this shelter, or set up this bench. I haven't talked to you guys in over two weeks at least. I put out that condensed 10-day uh, alone series video maybe two weeks ago, a week ago. Um, and it didn't, didn't do very well. I'm surprised, to be honest with you, but it didn't do very well. But regardless, I haven't done a video uh, be since before that. We were down in Windsor. We were um, celebrating the holidays with the family, and my kiddo had school break obviously right so she had christmas break and then we came home and then had two days of just blizzarding like i'm talking this all the snow came like like in, at once uh maybe two days ago so she had two days off so yeah that's why the lack in videos but we're back at it now so this will be a good chance to just recap uh connect with you guys have this little cool little uh day camp and um yeah know that I can come back here and have to go way farther up the road, which is fine. It's okay. It's just good to know. bigger of the two hidden woods and gator rucks I have. Brought this one because I brought a lot of good stuff. A lot of good food, warm stuff. Oh, things are happening. Ah, it's important to drink water in the winter time. This is important. I'm extremely hungry so I'm going to start my fire while I work on the bench. I'm gonna grab these super dry, dead cedar twigs if I can. Yeah. For my kindling. I've got an awesome way to start the fire today. You'll never guess what it is. I'm gonna make you wait until I start it. But yeah. Look at the abundance of dead, dry, dry snapping. When, you, when something snaps like that loud, when you crack it instead of bending or 
like you know that's super dry that's really good because lately everything's been all iced over all right we're gonna collect a lot of kindling This tree is perfect to get different levels of kindling from. So what I was getting before was much bigger than this, right? And then you get this tiny, tiny pencil lead stuff. Break it on itself. You can do it twice if you wanted. Now that, that will actually just take a, a, a flame. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, it's matches. It's matches. The cool way to start a fire is matches. And I wasn't going to do this. I was actually going to use birch bark, but I think that I can get this going with one match because of how dry it is and because of how many different layers of sizes. Layers of sizes there is in there. Sizes and layers and... Mm -hmm. So I was sent this Badger Claw um, saw case. It's like a wax canvas by a friend, by a subscriber. A long time ago, I haven't used it yet at all so thank you very much fits the uh boreal 21 the Egoa canyon saw perfectly i'm sure it fits other ones too nice and easy i gotta get myself another one of the, these i broke it somehow it doesn't close properly <laughs> but that's all right i'm pretty rough on it I'm just cutting some wood for a base for the uh, fire to go on top of. I tried breaking it with my knee and hurt my knee very badly. It's not a good thing to do that, eh? Trying to break wood over your knee. Everyone does it. It's just a bad, bad habit. It's easier than sawing, getting the saw out and everything, but it's not worth it on the old knee. You gotta get the saw out anyway, right? Alright, that's probably good. I got this massive sticks here. I thought I might show you guys how I organize my fire prep. So obviously, I want to keep this stuff super dry. The one that I'm lighting with the fire, I want to keep it up off the ground or whatever. It was sitting on some sticks here. While I move everything around, I'm just sticking on my backpack. I'm not sure if that's in frame. I got all this mess still and I don't want them too long. Because it's kind of like unwieldy when you put it on the fire and everything's just poking out every which way. They don't get a good um, lay on the fire anyway. So here's my secondary kindling. I can tell because it's super dry. It's about the size of a pencil. You can keep that up off on the ground. It's not that big a deal. This would be my third where they start to get thumb size, right? And then even into fuel. And some can be mixed together. See how dry that is? That is just... Well, that piece was a little bit more rotten than dry. Very dry though. Otherwise, I don't want to say don't use your knee. All right, this piece is a little rotten. I want to leave it out. All this seems very dry to me. It is. So that's all good thumb kindling. And because I'm kind of lacking in my uh, pencil size, <laughs> I'll add more thumb size to, th to that pile. And uh, some smaller ones too that are just kicking around. Get your minds out of the gutter, folks. All right, and then I've got my fuel, right? This is like two thumbs to wrist size, whatever. Right here is my fuel for now. I've got my um, brace or my platform, actually. We're gonna put that pretty close to the, to the snow wall because I'll be sitting kind of close if I use those trees as a marker. So we'll put that there, lock that all in so it's nice and up off the ground. And then it adds to the coals as well. Lighting fires in the winter time can be difficult, but it doesn't have to be. You just do your prep. And I want to show you with one match, like especially today, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a bad day, but uh, otherwise you can still get it going. We have birch bark to use. We have cedar fluff. We have a, a lot of pine resin, fat wood, I'm sure. And I have a fire starter in my bag as well. All right, here we go. One match. I'm gonna protect it, protect it, protect it. She's going, she's going close to the hand even. 
Oh. All right, that's going good. Let's get this on the platform. Pick up our matches. We'll pick up our matches. So if we would have used birch bark or cedar fluff in there, that would have worked really well as well. But obviously you didn't need it, as you saw. Oh, my tummy is growling. I am super hungry. So we're gonna make a little pot hanger out of this, nothing fancy. Just gonna leave this little piece on as a stopper more than anything. Get rid of that. And we could probably get rid of half of this too. My idea is just to gonna stick it in that snowbank. See how she goes. That looks like it'll work to me. Just gonna leave that little knot on there so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, yeah, cool. It's gonna burn up right now, so I'm just gonna pull it out. But that'll be that. And bonus firewood. Oh yeah, don't use your knee for things like this. I'm so hungry. Okay, I need a bench. I need a bench. If this tree's dead, this will work perfectly. It is too, I think. If you follow this up, there's no branches on it and it's cedar. It'll work. It'll work well because it'll be easy to cut down and work with too. Nice and straight. Yeah, she dead. She dead. Perfect. I was very, very confident that was dead. That's why I started to hack it into it like that. A bit on the rotten side. That will work for my seat. Okay, that's getting some good coals down there. Bam, son. What's that little multitasking? Oh my goodness. All right. So my zebra 12 inch is able to fit on the side here. This pouch, which is nice. I'm gonna cook up some eggs in my billy can, which is my favorite way to cook them. I'll show you exactly what I mean here. I got this nice little tinder pouch from the Hidden Woodsman. My skillet logo on one side. It's got a drawstring, not even a drawstring, like a, you tie it at the top, cinch it down and tie it. Paracord, gutted paracord is attached. Inside it, I've got some onions, a flatbread, some smoked cheddar, some butter, some thick, thick, thick bacon, she thick and some eggs. So what I'm gonna do first is get some water in the billy can. Ah, we'll add some snow in there. And melt it down real quick while we melt some butter in the top of this pan. Okay. 
Ciao, buddy. She goes on there. We can lower this a bit. Get out because that's where the fire is, right there. Okay. That'll get going pretty good. That's nice and hot over that, that fire. You can even get some more uh, twigs on there to stoke it up a bit. But before we do that, we've got to get some butter in our pan. Can't cook a, can't cook a good egg without some butter in the old stainless steel. This is a big chunk, we only need about half. It's good, it's frozen. And then I'm just gonna stick it right on the fire and I have these le leather gloves so I can pull it right out when I need to. Whoa, whoa, sorry guys. Taking you for a ride here. That shouldn't take more than a second there. Whoo, doing things. Oh, she's burning. She's gonna burn. There we go. All right. Got rid of the extra butter, threw it into the fire. Sacrificial butter. I gotta get the eggs out. Got some farm fresh. We'll do two eggs in that pan. Bam, that was not how I envisioned that going. But it worked, all right. So messy, so messy. Nah. All right, that worked too. You know what? I have three eggs. I was gonna bring Scout. Scout's doing fine, by the way. I was gonna bring him, but he was tired out from the last night. He had a rough night. Yeah, accidentally wet himself at night, so that's not very encouraging. But he was having a rough morning, so I. I decided to leave them at home. What is going on? I'm having a exis existential crisis. Okay, three eggs deep, that's gonna take a while. But um, I assume my snow has melted by now. I assumed wrong. That's gonna go right on the coals, melt that down. And I do need to go get more firewood because this is all cedar we're burning and it burns up pretty quickly. Okay. Only a little bit of shell. Only a little bit. There we go. There's one down there too, but we're going to leave that one. I'm new. I'm new. While we wait for our snow to melt, I've got some smoked cheddar from Hickory Farms from Christmas. Look at the, look at the grill lines, boy. So that should be pretty good on there. Try and cut it thin. You know what? I wanna eat a piece, because I'm pretty hungry. I'm gonna eat a piece of this. Not the end piece, because it had the cheese funk on it. We'll cook that cheese funk first. What's that cheese funk all about, anyway? Mmm, smoky. Smoky and cheddary. All right, three pieces of cheese in there, three eggs. I'm gonna top it off with some sliced onion. Mm, got some old dank in there. Oh, no, onion dank. Oh, this is gonna be good, guys. This is going to be good. All right. I got these little spices. What am I gonna put on there? Some Montreal steak spice, or it might even be actually Bam Sun spice, or some all seasoning. We'll probably put the Bam Sun slash Montreal steak spice mystery spice on. Pretty handy. I got sent these in the mail. Thank you very much to the sender. That's probably enough. Don't want it to be overpowering. She's got to be melted now. Yes, completely melted. It's about half full of water. Then this goes right in the top. Then I hang this and it boils from the bottom and cooks the eggs in the top perfectly. It is amazing. It's my favorite way to do it. But again, I've got to get 
more wood on that fire because those flames are nowhere near high enough. And even these charred pieces, these it's like uh, embered up, it's more just like a soft charcoal. Doesn't really produce that much good coals, but it's readily available, it's easy to cut, and uh, yeah, it's fine. So just looking at this piece of wood, this fourth part, this Y might be useful. I may be able to prop up one side and jam a stick inside that. So at first I was gonna cut it right below the Y, but I'll leave it maybe to where that cut part is there, the hacked part. And then that way, if need be, I can stick that standing straight up. This is almost an actual fork. That's, all, that's pretty rare to find on a cedar. So I'll cut it high enough here too where it has some grab if need, yeah, if, if need be. Why, I just said if need be. Who says if need be twice in the same like 10 minutes? Ah, she's blinding. All right, I'm down here. Maybe here. See what I'm talking about. If, if I have to, I can stick something here like this as part of as part of a bench. See how easy that is, right there. I got a bench. Look at me, I have bench. When is the Borat start to get old? Hey, probably already, huh? Already, I can take off the end here and use that to prop up the other side. Where is my saw? I should probably lose these snow snowshoes too. It's always a relief getting these things off. Ah, Thanks to come off. Yeah, nice to walk again. Limber, Limber Joe, Joe of the Limber Lost. this fire again. I'll probably lose these glasses, eh? It was bright earlier. Ugh. tree snaps in there
There we go. Not too shabby. No backrest. That's all right. This is probably just going to be a. Well, this definitely is going to be a temporary one. I'm going to tie that piece on for while I'm here too. It'd be cool to have a couple different spots in this place. You know what I mean? Snow and shoe and snowshoeing somewhere like here from way back or even from the road if you bring emerald here it's not that far of a hike in really anyways yeah i have a couple different spots here but i am going to just lash that real quick because i can see that just sliding back and me taking a tumble it's a little smoky a little smoky Look at that, three different colors, four different colors in that little bundle. Let's see if we can get white. Ba bam Ba bam Oh, it's attached. It's tied. The old Canadian jam knot will come in handy on this one. Nice and easy. This wrap seems all up. The take seems home. You know? That makes sense, right? Raph seems up to take seems home. Somebody will know what I'm talking about. My daughter knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Maybe tie a stop or not. Alright, that's fine. It's bad. Oh yeah, man, she ain't going nowhere. Nowhere, bud. That's good. That's good. It's a good little chill spot. One piece of paracord, all dead wood. <laughs> not too bad. Not what I had in mind for today, not at all. But that's okay. Got lots of time to be here. Okay, I really do need to cut more firewood because that's not cutting it. And then I gotta grill up my bacon too. I got big, thick, thick cut bacon. Look at this. This is me walking without snowshoes in, in the snow. Snowshoes help. Snowshoes help quite a bit. I'm walking on my old snowshoe tracks now. But like, if I push it down, it's up to my knee. It's my knee in spots. We literally just got home from Windsor, like I said, and it dumped on us here. Windsor was like 50 degrees, 60 degrees. Ridiculous. Look at the sun. As I'm sitting here watching this, I'm just thinking, if I got a cheap snowmobile and left it here, I could boot around anywhere I wanted up and down like the length of it and then hike into the bush. I could even potentially take the snowmobile in the bush depending on what, what type I get. It's not a bad idea. Might be worth it. My four-wheeler would get stuck in this snow. Unless I got tracks for it. Does anyone have experience with tracks on their four-wheeler? I like the idea of it. I like the looks of it too, but I'm not sure how practical it would be for around here. Like this is just beginning of January and it's pretty pretty sufficient snow already. It's supposed to come down again on Friday. So I got some bigger uh, logs on, on top there. Hoping I'll create some good coals and then I'm going to very soon raise this up so it's still getting warm staying warm but stopping from it from cooking and i'm going to lay out my bacon project my bacon's gonna be very greasy because it's so thick it's getting pretty flamey right i'm gonna have to keep almost flames going in order to cook it anyways because these don't last as coals you see you see it around so what i'm gonna do i've got two sticks here i cut about the same size i'm gonna stick them into that snow wall behind me and have them come out and prop my grill up on top of there as opposed to sticking the grill in the ground. It has legs, 
but it'll be farther up away from the, uh, the fire. I can move this completely now. Whatever needs to be done can be done on top of the grill or, or even drop down after it's like 99% cooked. So I do want to warm it up after anyways, but this can come off. This can come out and these can go in. So see how high. Ah, it's so smoky. So very smoky. That's way too far away from it. Right about there seems decent. Oh man, the smoke's gonna taste good on the on the bacon, but it's hard to work with. I'm not cold anymore, that's for sure. All right, so this grill gets it gets hung. Uh, that's pushing it. She's not very warm up there. A bit better. I'll start it off. I have to add some twigs. See how she goes anyway. It's bacon though. No joke. So I've got a whole plan to put the, all this fixings on a flatbread and wrap it up and eat it that way, but I am really hungry. And as good as this looks, I can't wait. So I'm just going to take one egg, one single egg from there. Can you see, look at this piece of cheese just in there. Oh, man. Oh, that looks good. Oh, buddy, look at it. Look at that. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm so excited about this. Okay. The lid goes back on that, and that's going to get all put in the wrap with the bacon, but had to do it. That was a good bite right there. I don't want to lose any of it. Starting to get a little dizzy. I'm so hungry. I got egg white and cheese and onion and spice in that bite. No yolk. No yoking around. That was a dad yoke. Yeah. All right. Mm. This is really good. I suggest you try it. Mm. It was beyond good. Beyond good. All right. Oh. And then when I want to warm it up, it's fine. I could just stick it back right over top of the fire, warm it up, scoop it out onto my wrap. Prick it, prick it. I don't really see any drips yet. Drip, drip. Where is she going? There she is. I might have to throw some twigs on there. Get it going a little bit better. Or lower it even. Maybe I should just lower it. The wind is really whipping through here. I really hear it. Well, I uh, lowered it down. The whole fire died out. I had to raise it up and add some more wood. So we're getting somewhere now.
Got you. Don't lose the bacon. Slingshot the hot bacon in my face. <laughs> Something bad is going to happen. Oh, it smells so good. The smokiest bacon going. Oh my goodness. It's nowhere near cooked. Hot, so hot. Yeah, something. I'll get this guy out first. The bacon can sit there. We gotta check our water because I want a drink and the eggs, see if they're hot. Yeah, they're... Yep, we're good to go. Good to go. Wow. Yeah, it's hot. I can feel it. Splash something burning my hands. Yep. That there. Keep that warm. I brought some coffee, but I'm not going to drink it. I'm going to drink this balsam turt balsam turfy instead this balsam fur tea instead oh yes look at that this looks so very good it's a big meal too a lot of bacon and eggs for little Joe oh little old Joe Bacon is underneath. Take. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'll take a chewy and a crispy. Put it in there. How many do I have left? So many bacons. All right, that's gonna be the wrap. That's a wrap. Uh. Oh my goodness! Look at this thing. Are you looking at it? I can't even wait. I can't even wait to sit down. Are you ready? Hope nothing spills. Wow. Wow. I want to take a picture of that. Oh my goodness. Let's try a piece of this bacon. Mmm, cold. But very good. So smoky. The smokiest. Oh. This is not fair. I should be sharing this with someone. At least go. Maybe not because there's onions. The onions are super soft because they like soaked in that egg, uh, butter, dank. Uh, cheese, cheese is in there too. That's the word I was thinking of. Goodness, it feels so good in my stomach. Man, this is some good food. For real. It's the way to do it. Slow cook the bacon, get it all smoky, and flame broil it a little bit with this thick stuff. Man.
Look at this breakfast burrito. Check that, Martin. Check that little scramble, though. <laughs> Bubba ham. In a second. Any second now. Any second. It's gonna be a bam burrito. Bam son burrito. There we go. Look at the, look at the egg, boy. Look at the onion. The bacon. Mmm. Of course it's hot, of course it's hot, of course it's hot. Why wouldn't it be hot? Don't break logs over your knees, kids. Oh my goodness. One last cup, this might be my third. Feels good on my tummy. A little tum tum. It's after 4.30 now. Don't got that much time left. But it was a good little outing, not, ex not what I expected, you know, not, not half even what I expected to happen today. I wanted to start on a shelter, but I spent a lot of time talking to the farmer. And, um, yeah, just hiking around. But I'm glad I came, it was a fun day. I learned that I need to be that way. A lot. I learned that. I think I'm going to get a snowmobile. A, a small. I was going to get one anyways. Obviously. I'm up here. Everybody has one. They're useful. They're fun. But I mean like a really old one. Just a used one. Get for maybe a thousand dollars. Or something like that. That I can just boot around. Here. Because for me to walk from. Here. To far enough. Where I don't think I can hear the highway. It's going to be far, because I already walked a distance this way. It was a decent amount. So, anyways, whatever. You know what I mean? It'll work out either way. Maybe I can get a, a spot clear for my truck down farther uh, towards the farm. What a cheap little... Oh, that was weird. Uh, but a cheap little snowmobile kind of sounds fun. i strap some stuff on the back of it. Tastes like bacon jerky now. It's freezing cold. Super smoky. Yeah, and it's good just to get a video out anyways, just to kind of tell you guys where I am, what's going on. Like I said, it's been a while. I have a friend, two friends coming up to stay a couple nights in about four days, five days. We're going to go out in the hot tent. I'm sure I'll film that. I don't know how much of a video it will be, though, with all this renting and raving in there. But we'll get something filmed. Pretty much all cleaned up. After I got done eating, I kind of packed my backpack up pretty quick. I'm getting kind of chilled here sitting here not doing anything and the fire's out completely so I am going to undo this one knot and take this one little piece of paracord off this tree just for the chance that I don't come back to this spot I assume I will but what is one piece of paracord it takes two seconds to take on and to take off with the help of the old Canadian jam knot Joe Robin at Bushcraft brought to you by the Canadian jam knot since 2007 no! Make a liar out of me. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Pop! Pop! It's just because the end of the, uh, the paracord is burnt and it's sticking instead of just popping through the old loop like it normally does. You know what? This will work. at work I swear there we go wasn't mine yeah 
show you what happened. So now that'll never come undone, but whatever, that's fine. This piece of paracord was burned at the end to kind of uh, seal it like you do. It's a normal thing to do. And instead, of, normally it just slides right through one of these holes, or these uh, closed up knots, but it got stuck. That's all right. We fixed her. I'll show you how I made this bed a little bit closer up. It's pretty simple. I'm sure you already get it, but for those who might want a little closer look, I'll show you here in one second. My hands are getting cold, guys. Hands too cold. Hands too cold. I like that it still fits. Um, the axe still fits through the sleeve, even with the axe guard on it, which is nice. Sometimes I've had them before where I kind of rode up like that. So obviously you saw me stab the Y into the ground and tie it to secure the whole thing to this small tree standing up. That worked well. And then on this side, it wasn't necessary because there was more snow. I hadn't moved, removed all the snow from this side, so I just layered logs until it worked. At first it didn't work and I just added that, added that second one and it made it nice and sturdy and again pushed up against this uh, stationary tree. So pretty simple, pretty effective, nice and quick and uh, I don't feel like I damaged anything or really made too much of an intrusion. Piled some snow up, cut some dead stuff, had a fire. This fire is almost dead cold. Yeah. Literally, that's crazy. That's cedar for you. Again, that's Thuya occidentalis. If anyone is if anyone is wondering what I'm talking about, you can look at the Latin name. But I want to kick some snow on it anyway, just to be safe. Uh, imagine if I was camping here, which I'm going to do, not in this specific lo location, obviously. And all I had was cedar. That's all I've seen to burn really around here. Um, that wouldn't be good gets dark very soon around 5 5 30 now and um yeah to stay warm especially if i was relying on it to stay warm all night if i had a wool blanket and like a shelter or something which i'm going to do here but anyways oh yours these are getting cold that's why location is important that's why scouting locations are important too this is the first time i've been here grab the camera need to make a video but ideally i come here without the camera search you know what i mean that's why i spend a day just searching for the best location and then go in and hike in and, and film it all and and build a shelter and stuff but yeah i like to show you guys the experience <laughs> anyways i think i'm gonna get out of here let's pack up we got our snowshoes back on which is always fun putting snowshoes on can be a little uh confusing at first and all the bindings are different I like to slam my foot right in as hard as it goes. That way I get a nice tight fit on the back. These are pretty cool bindings. These are old. Are these tubs. Bought these probably, I don't know, close to 10 years ago, I'd assume. Back in the day, they're a couple hundred bucks. Super expensive, but I've got a lot. Not super expensive. Super expensive at the time for me. It's hard to... Actually, I think my mom and my yeah, I think my mom and her husband got them for me. But anyways, they've served me well, very well, and they're necessary. Like you don't, you're not walking through the bush in northern Ontario or anywhere else with a lot of snow without snowshoes. Oh, these gloves are freezing up on me. do a good job of packing all that stuff back I have my poncho liner in there I envisioned myself using it as a blanket by the fire but I'm done it's time to go home all right well I hope you guys enjoy this video 
try and bring Scout out next time. It's pretty cold too, like, I don't know. Oh, I guess I could bring the poncho liner for him, he could lay on that. He's doing well. Thank you to everyone for inquiring. Oh man. All right, have a good day. I'll see you guys soon with an adventure. Goodbye. Pink in the sky on the way out here. Oh, huffing and puffing, guys. Almost back to the road, though. Just got back in the truck, negative seven. It's almost 5 p.m. Ah, my, my face is numb. All right, now we're good. All right, you ready? Are you ready? All over under big coffee. Yeah! <laughs> I love this truck.